So let's have a look at the last problem in this exam. And uh, as we saw uh, 15 minutes ago, first we should solve this uh, as a newsboy or a one periodic problem. And then we should look at it as uh, uh, Q by using a QR models where you actually are allowed to store inventory. Uh, but as the new newsboy problem, we have to decide about the optimal order size and assume that we have only one order per season. So before this summer season, we have to decide how many items of this furniture set we should, uh, should order to maximize the profit. You have an expected value uh, or the, uh, the demand have the expected demand will be 90 and you have a standard deviation of 15. So here you have a normal uh, distribution. And we might remember that on these types of newsboy problem, we are talking about the overage and the underage cost, where the overage cost is the cost of overestimating the market, and the underage cost is the cost of uh, underestimating uh, the market. Uh, in this case, I, we uh, yeah, I can look at the solution, which is shown here. Uh, and as you see immediately, this should be the opposite, because the underage cost should be the CU, and the overage cost should be the CO. So these two should be, well, change place here. But anyway, the underage cost by underestimating a market means that you don't have enough items on stock. You are losing a sale. And if you're not able to sell one uh, unit of this furniture, you will actually lose the profit of 1,400. You have a sales price of 2,000 and cost of 600. And if you're not able to, to sell one item, you will lose or not earn 1,400, which then is defined as the underage cost. Uh, in addition, you have the overage cost in this example, which is how much you will lose if you are overestimating the market. And overestimating, that means that you have bought more than you actually are able to sell. Then you will lose the, sales, uh, the purchase price of 600, but in this case, you have a salvage value of 400, so after the season, you will sell, and you assume that you are able to sell every, uh, everything at uh, this price. So you will lose only 200 kroner if you have too much uh, inventory, if you have bought more than you are able to sell. So here we have the overage cost of four, uh, the underage cost of 1400 and the overage cost of 200. Expected demand as given 90, standard deviation 15, and the critical ratio is defined to be the underage cost divided by the sum of the underage and the overage cost. 1400 divided by 1600 will be 0 0.875. And then we can use, well, well we, should, we should use the normal distribution table and find that the corresponding value of the C, the function, uh, or the, the C value. Let's now use table A1, which is uh, you are used to here. And we had uh, the value of uh, uh, 0.875. And we remember in this table, half 0 0.5 is at the left of the curve here. So we are looking for 0 0.375, which is the corresponding, uh, the value corresponding to the area under the curve, but with 0 0.5 uh, excluded. This curve is symmetric when you're talking about the, uh, the normal distribution curve. And we are looking for the value then of 0 0.375. Try to find that value in the table here. And this should be the closest, 0 0.3749, corresponds to a Z value of, uh, or was it? I have to look up what I was actually looking for. Looking for 0 0.875, uh, 
uh, and uh, zero, uh, zero point three seven five. That's correct. Zero point three seven five. This number is the closest. Corresponds to a value of one point one five. One point fifteen. So the C value in the normal distribution table here would have a value of 1.15 to, to meet this particular critical ratio. This critical ratio means to what percentage should we try to meet the demand to get the maximum uh, profit out of, of this problem. And then we can use this value and the C value of 1.15 to find the order size because the order size should then be the expected demand, the mu value, which is 90, multiplied, no, multiplied, uh, and add the product of the standard deviation and the C value. This corresponds to what we call the safety stock, which is expected to be left on an average uh, cycle where you have a demand of 90 but since the um, uh, underage cost is much higher than the overage cost we should of course have some extra because we will earn more money on selling when you have uh, when you are able to, to sell when you have a high demand and then you will lose if you have a low demand so in this case, 15, the standard deviation, multiplied by the found C value of 1.15 plus 90, the average demand. Order size of 107. And that's the answer for problem number A. And then problem B. Make sure that we read the information very thorough. Find the values of the parameters as shown here. Well, we have a monthly demand, and here we are talking about months. We don't have to calculate for to, to a year, because we have everything in the time unit of months. We have the monthly demand of 18. We have an interest rate per month as 2%. Uh, we have the C value, the cost per unit, 600. And then the holding cost will be 12 per month. The unit cost multiplied by the interest rate. So store one item in one month will give a cost corresponding to 12 kroner. The standard deviation per month is said to be 7. The K value, ordering cost, 500. Uh, the P value, which now is the penalty cost. And remember, we now have a stochastic or uncertain demand situation where you have a variable demand we want to determine the optimal value of the reorder point and the order size and we also know that since this is stochastic uncertain sometimes you have a very high demand and you might experience a stockout and other times you have a low demand and don't get a stock out. Uh, and you will have very many items left on stock when you receive a new order. So the cycles will be different, but on average you will have uh, the safety stock as defined as the average value of a stock when you receive a new order. And since you have a quite high penalty for a stock out, it's cheaper to have a safety stock than to experience stock out uh, uh, quite frequently. So what we now want to find is the optimal combination of the reorder point and the order size Q. Values here, penalty for a stock out, 600. The mu, the uh, expected demand, is 18 uh, in, in the, the lead time, and the lead time is uh, one month. So we have to wait one month before we get a delivery, and that is why we might experience stockouts and we might e experience uh, a high, uh, uh, high value of the uh, high level of the stock when uh, the cycle is over because you have uncertainty in the lead time. So finding the optimal combination here, we need to solve the two functions iteratively every other time. 
values will remain the same uh, until the values will remain the same in two consecutive iterations. And we can start with the EOQ formula to find the start value of Q. So use this one. The EOQ formula is a well, quite robust formula. It will give you a pretty good solution, even if this is probably not the exact correct solution for a stochastic problem. It will usually give you a value which is not too far away from the optimal value here. So when you have a EOQ value of 39, as in this case, use this value in the formula shown here to find 39, the value of h, p, the penalty, and lambda, the demand, will be constant. So use this parameter values, multiply by the current q value, and now we will get 1 minus the cumulative probability for over stockout with a given r value, which is this number, 0 0.0433. And then we can use the other, the table A4, which also is the table for the normal distribution. Look up this number, and we can see the columns here. This is the cumulative probability, and this is 1 minus the cumulative probability, which is what we are looking for. We remember that the formula we had gave us the 1 minus the cumulative probability, which is the probability of getting a stock out, getting a higher result than uh, with the value of c as shown here. So the probability of getting into this area of the normal distribution curve. Uh, well, we were looking for the value which we found was uh, uh, 0.0433. Should be closer now, 0 0.0433. This one should be the closest with a corresponding C value of 1.71. So now we have identified this C value as the one corresponding to the value we are looking for, this value, where you have the given probability of getting a stock out. Uh, and then Using c equal to 1.71, we can also look up this L of c function, called the standardized loss function, which is uh, shown in the next table. So 1.71 has a L of c value of 0 0.0178. And this value can be used to calculate the n of r, uh, which again is the expected number of stockouts or expected numbers of units short in one uh, cycle. Uh, the reorder point. This is actually the same formula as we saw in the normal uh, distribution, uh, no, no, as we saw in the, uh, in the newsboy problem. The expected demand plus the standard deviation multiplied by the C value. Standard deviation now was supposed to be uh, 7 per month. We have identified the C value of 1.71, and we have an expected demand of 18. So this corresponds to a reorder point of 30, which means now our policy so far will be to order 39 items when you have 30 left on stock. And you can identify this n of r function as the standard deviation multiplied by the L of c function which now is 7 multiplied by this value, 0 0.1246. This is the average number of units short per cycle, which again should be used in the formula for updating the Q value. So here we, we are given these two formulas, 
and this should be solved iteratively every all the time until they will stabilize at the same level. Well, here we have known values. We have the demand, the lambda. We have the k value, uh, the ordering cost. We have the penalty cost for a stock out. We have the holding cost, and we have this n of r function, which is the expected numbers uh, of units short or the average number of units short, which we now with the current policy have calculated to be 0 0.1246. So by putting in the parameter values, we now will update the Q value, the order size, to 42. <coughs> and then again, use 42 in this formula to update the reorder point and the C value. Using 42 instead of 39 here will give us 0 0.0467 look up that value in the normal distribution table. Well, it should be here. This one is the closest value we can find. Corresponds to 1.68 and a given L of C value of 0 0.0192. And we have identified the C value of 168. We can find the reorder point of 30. We can find the expected number of units short here. And we can calculate the Q value. Well, we have actually found a reorder point here of 30, which is identical to the previous one. So we could actually have stopped here. Since we are, uh, well, if, if we are looking at the accuracy of integer units, which is quite natural when you're talking about units of garden furniture, uh, so then we could actually have stopped here because we got the same reorder point. But anyway, doing one more calculation here to find, to, to verify that it is correct, our policy should be order 42 units when you have 30 units left on stock. This will be the policy in this, uh, in this uh, stochastic uh, uh, inventory uh, problem, which should give us the optimal uh, profit uh, or the minimum number, uh, the minimum uh, cost over time. The cycles will be different, but over time, this will give us the optimal, uh, the optimal uh, or the minimum cost. Question. Uh, when should we? Well, you should stop when you are satisfied with the accuracy. And uh, usually in your problem, accuracy should be integer units. In the Q2 formula, it's not R1? In the... In, in the Q2? Here? Yeah. yeah, you're right. Uh, but should it be... What? Yeah, it should be. This is a misprint. Yeah, thank you. This is a misprint because this number is this number. So here it's just only a misprint. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, let's now try to answer the last question, which is to, well, analyze the current policy. We have found that we should use a Q value of 42 and an R value of 30. Then we are asked about the safety stock, and the safety stock is the average size of the stock when you receive a new order. And the average size will be the reorder point minus the average demand in the lead time. So on average, you will have 12 units left on stock when you receive a new order. But sometimes you might have a stock out. Sometimes you might have a lot more items left on, on stock because of the stochasticity or the uncertainty of the demand. The probability of not getting a stock out, well, we can also find that because we have now identified the C value of 1.68, which corresponds to the policy we have identified here by the R reorder point of 30. This will correspond to this value. And then we can go into the normal distribution table and find the corresponding F of C value, because this will give us the probability or the area below under the normal distribution uh, curve for this particular C number. 
So go into the C value of 1.68. And 1.68 is here. Thank you. 1.68 is here, which corresponds to an F of C, a probability of, is this correct? 95.35. So this is now the probability of not getting a stock out, 95.35%. Area under the curve, up to there. And then it's also very easy to find the probability of getting a stock out as one minus this number. So you will have a probability for each cycle, you will have a probability of 4.65% of getting into this area, which will give you a stock out and a penalty. Okay, that's it with the exam last year. And uh, I don't have any more, so I uh, can just repeat what uh, I already said about the exam. Very important to organize your notes in advance. And also try to solve as many problems as possible, as good as possible. And as you can see in the, uh, at the front page, right here, at the front page of the exam, that all sub-problems will count equally. And it's better to answer many problems partial than only a few perfect. So try to answer the small problems first. Try to schedule out a solution. Show at least the formulas that you would use on the problems you're not able to solve perfectly. Because then you will get credit on the problems anyway. You can show that you, are, you understand the problem, but you are out of time, so you are not able to, to solve them uh, perfectly. Uh, of course, if you don't answer anything, or if you answer completely wrong, then you will not get any credits on the problems. But if you are able to write something sensible, then you will get some credit for each of the sub-problem, even if it's not perfectly correct. OK, that's it. I don't have anything else. So if there are no questions, we will quit. And uh, as mentioned, I will probably leave pretty early, 12 or one in on Friday and uh, then I will be absent for a couple of days but I will be back on Sunday evening if you have some uh, well immediate questions before the exam on Monday okay thank you